Welcome to Hot Topics. I'm Heather Catlin. On August 21st, 2015, the world learned about three courageous young American men who stopped a terrorist attack on a train bound for Paris, saving more than 500 passengers. The story of these heroic men is now being told in the movie The 1517 to Paris, directed by Clint Eastwood. What's extremely unique about this movie is that the actual men who stopped the terrorist attack are the leading actors in the film. They all join me now, Anthony Sadler, former Oregon National Guardsman Alec Scarlatos, and former U.S. Air Force Airman First Class Spencer Stone. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for, Thanks having, for having us. Yeah. So, uh, one, I mean, you go from saving lives to being in a big movie. This has probably been the biggest roller coaster of your life. That's a Huge, good way. Yeah. It's a good way to describe it. Roller coaster goes up and down, and then. When Pit, Clint Eastwood picked it up to do the movie, we were like, oh, this is this is as good as it gets. And then three weeks before shooting, he asked us, hey, you guys just want to be in it? And we're like, no way. Like, we thought he was, like, joking or something, yeah. but he was very serious. And three weeks before shooting, so we say, yeah. And then it's like, now we're off to this new yeah. adventure. Yeah, they had an actress picked out. They had been casting over a month at that point, and it was just super late call. So we just never, didn't even see it coming. Did you put down the phone, like, dude? Well, Clint we, Eastwood was we, we, we were there in person. We were there in yeah. person. Yeah, he so we're trying to show it on our face, like. Like, be cool, be cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, sure, sure, sure. So before we get to what happened on the train, the, the whole acting thing, you know, you guys go from uh, doing what you do in your regular lives to being on the big screen. You know, you, everyone's seen movies, but now you're in one. Was acting like you thought it was? Not at all. I mean, because you can you see it on TV and you can kind of like you can see them going through the emotions but then when you do it yourself it's not just about showing the emotions because you have to worry about all these other things like continuity and just the whole pressure of being on a set and all these people watching you and the cameras obviously too it's just a whole it's just much more in depth than you'd ever realize and so i think that was the, probably the biggest learning experience of our lives i used to think it was easy watching actors like not knowing anything about it like i'm just like that's not hard like that's they're famous joke. they're yeah. cake that's cake you got an easy life bro yeah. <laughs> like, and then i did it and i was like this is serious stuff like i could it's really an art form that's it's really how art. i describe it like yeah. it was like through the process i learned why it's really like part of the arts like it really takes a a special something to play a character but lucky enough we got to play ourselves so yeah so you didn't really have to go in depth you're like well here i am <laughs> yeah, yeah it was just like a weird yeah. it was a weird dynamic like what do we show but then like clint clint was like the perfect mentor yeah to i mean i thought it was it would be kind of a you know harder to play ourselves than i thought because i just thought we're gonna have to a lot of insecurities of ourselves that we're gonna have to get over because we're not portraying a character and I, I don't see how we would get to the point of feeling completely free mm -hmm. if I if I probably have never overcome these securities my insecurities my entire life. Right. So, yeah, I tell you what though, we weren't really just playing ourselves. We were playing ourselves in August of 2015, and I think we had both put on some weight since then. <laughs> so like, there was a lot of live life. You know what I'm saying? I'm here for a, a good time, not a long time. There's a lot of right. homework involved just in playing ourselves because not only did we have to memorize the lines, we had to work out at the gym a lot. I mean, it was, See, it was, it was a whole process. See, that's when you make acting sound yeah. like easy. Because you're like, we had to yeah. work out of the gym. I know, so. right? Yeah, he's trying to make it tough. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm just saying, it, can, it consumed oh, all of our time. Train. I had to go drink yeah. one to present right. East, we, but it yeah. was yeah. difficult. It was, it was the best two months of our lives. That's for like, sure. And now we all got the acting bug. I mean, for two months, I just got to act, work yeah. out, hang out with these guys hang out with Clint Eastwood, hang out in Atlanta, hang out in France, hang out in Italy. Like, and he truly like hung out with us. Like he didn't yeah. have to do that. Like um, he could have just directed us and you know, went back on his day. But like afterward he would hang out with us. He kind of became like our fourth, our fourth crew member. So he took us under his wing and showed us a lot and kind of gave us the confidence to rock this thing out and hopefully pursue it after this. Our, our next movie deal is going to be a package deal with all three of us. I like it. Gotta, Childhood gotta friends just role. taking over <laughs> yeah. Hollywood. We're, exactly. like a, we're like a triplet. Like you can't get rid of us forever. <laughs> I love it. Well, looking back on it, I mean, you guys stopped a terrorist attack. What does that mean to you? It's pretty cool. And but looking back on it, it's cool that we got to do it with each other because we're, we're young guys. So mm -hmm. it's like um, nobody lost their life and mm -hmm. it's turned into such a blessing for us that um, it's just pretty cool. Like we talk about it amongst ourselves like we got to beat up a terrorist. But like 
yeah. also at I the mean, same time. And then do it again in the movie. It's every man's dream, in my opinion, to yeah. go beat up a terrorist. But like, it's a good pickup line, so yeah. you know what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I choked this guy out one time. You know? But also, also, we're like extremely, uh, as cool as that is for us, like we're all extremely thankful and to be alive and humbled by the experience in hindsight right. that we did actually save lives, not only ourselves, but hundreds of people. It, no, like uh, all this stuff is cool. The last few years has been great. You know, that us playing ourselves is awesome, the movie's awesome, but what we did that day is something that we'll always be proud of and something yeah. we can have forever and we can have some type of contentment in our lives knowing we contributed to kind of the masses in a way, which I feel like a lot of people, that's their goal in life. So, yeah. and I feel like we reached it and now we can just keep doing more. Yeah, it's our duty to kind of spread the story now at this point. Like we lived it, we survived it, we got to retell it. So it's like um, the fact that he casted us, we kind of feel like it's our duty to spread the story so people can draw like the positive themes from it yeah. that they would. Definitely feel like we got to earn the life we've been given. Encourage people to step up for the greater good. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. I love it. Take me back to that moment on the train when you realized something's not right. Well, uh, they were asleep and I was just up texting some friends and I heard a gunshot and breaking glass and I didn't really know what to think of it because we were on a train in Europe. So I was like, I can't be what I think it is or I was just trying to decipher it in my head. And then a train employee comes running away from the noise at a full sprint that woke them up and caused us to all look back to see what he was running from. And that's where we shot, saw the shirtless man with the AK-47 and just like our hearts just sank really. And uh, I mean, we, ducked down behind the seats and kind of in a state of shock. And I was like, Spencer, go get him. Spencer took off and then it was pretty much on from there. And it was just automatic? I mean, I was woken up out of my sleep and so was Anthony at the time. So I woke up in the middle of the attack and I didn't have much time to process stuff, but I feel like we quickly realized what was going on because he just looked like a cliche terrorist, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Came in shirtless, backpack strapped in the front of him, a bunch of magazines sticking out. He's got an AK-47, you know, so I mean, it became clear what he's gonna do and uh, you know, it looked like he either jammed the gun or something, he just hadn't had him firing yet. And so I figured, okay, he's like, we're going 200 miles an hour on this train in the middle of the countryside, there's nowhere to go. What are you really gonna do? You have two options, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna wait to get shot, mm -hmm. or you're gonna make a run for it and see what happens. And to me, that was the better option, and I saw an opportunity and I took it. And luckily I didn't hesitate and I went when I did because it, didn't, it all worked out, so. I mean, just to replay that moment in your mind, it just has to be so crazy. Did it seem like, you know, an hour went by or yeah. did it seem like a second? Like two no, minutes, two minutes was, seemed like two it, years. And then the fact that he kept pulling out different weapons was just like, when is this going to end? And it was one guy versus us three. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was messy. Like we were on a train moving. He was filling around. Like he dropped the AK and now it was a pistol. He dropped the pistol and now here's a box cutter. It was just like, what does, else does this guy have and why can't we get him down? So the movie does a really accurate job at showing exactly what happened that day. So um, I can't wait for everybody to see it so they could actually, you know, put a visual and people can see that it wasn't planned. This wasn't something like we set up like and knew it was going to happen beforehand. So we had a chance to get ready. It was really messy. Um, life or death kind of struggle and it, I think that'll captivate the audience. Yeah, and after seeing the film for the first time, I, I can speak for all of us and say that we're very proud of what we kind of did, or created, I guess, along with Clint Eastwood, because it's a very, very accurate mm -hmm. depiction of what happened. There's no Hollywoodness about it. It's exactly what happened to the T. I I would think if I was in that kind of situation, I would have some nightmares after that. I mean, after you stop a terrorist attack, or were you guys like, yo, we well, did it? Or pretty, 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 yeah. pretty much that. I mean, yeah. it, it was, we were honestly kind of cavalier about the whole thing. We took it lightly and did a lot of joking about it. And also, uh, they say that staying busy the first six months after a traumatic event helps uh, prevent PTSD. And we were definitely very busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, obviously going through it with the, the three Your of us. Friends. and. I mean, nobody died, so there wasn't really a whole lot of like regret or anything like that that came into play. Yeah, and I remember the one of the most crucial things for me in like regulating those emotions and stuff like that was the Air Force gave me a psychologist uh, right after the attack, mm -hmm. and I just then I only talked to him once, and we just kind of had coffee and talked at a table, and he was just telling me like, okay, like you know, you're all the way up here right now, and you will be for the next few months, but you know, at some point you're gonna come back down to a normal level 
and that normal level is going to feel like depression mm -hmm. or and then that's when you're going to start thinking about things and everything like that but as long as you can be conscious and aware of that stage then you should be able to to deal with it well and so that was really good advice for me and advice I like to give to other people and then Clint Eastwood came so yeah. they went back up and yeah. then I, I was like well I'm back Absolutely. up so <laughs> what's next gotta keep this train going yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we still haven't need, came down from that I need yeah. a fix yeah. Yeah. We, we just have to keep it up for the rest of our lives or we're just gonna like crash and oh yeah, my gosh well you guys thank you so much for coming thank here thank you much. for what you did on that train and we're so excited to see the movie February 9th go out and see it thanks, thanks for having you. us thank you. Yeah.